Hey, welcome to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. Out of the gate, we have Steve Plotnick from NASA Goddard. And a special tribute video to Dr. Don Cornelius. I gotta go to my cheat sheet here with my, my iPad here. Cheat away, Chris. Symposium uh, it provides a forum to exchange information on the latest scientific advancements using multi sensor measurements from the A train and is structured along four major themes atmospheric c- composition and chemistry, it's very aerosols, important. clouds, radiation, and the hydrological cycle, atmospheric, oceanic, and terrestrial components of the carbon cycle and ecosystem and weather and other operational applications. If you think that was a mouthful, you should just uh, scan a few of these posters (laughs) in the poster (laughs) section here, because the scientists have brought their A game to the A-Train Symposium, there's no doubt. How long did it take you to pick that up? (laughs) Just a couple seconds. (laughs) Now, there's rumor mill that you actually studied the A-Train before the show. Yeah, actually, what I did, I didn't know what the A-Train was before the symposium. When I found out about it, I thought, well, let's see, New Orleans has a rich musical heritage, of course, and the A-Train is actually named after a Duke Ellington song, the A-Train. But I wanted to, uh, you know, sort of give it a different musical feel and, and have a new way to remember the A-Train and what it is. originally wanted to do a bunch of dances for each of the satellites, but then when I tried one, I pulled a hammy, and I decided to go all graphic. Did you, did you pull out the VHS and actually watch some old shows yeah, from the 70s? Uh, and this is Don Cornelius endorsed, by the hey, way. Welcome to the A-Train. A-train. Yeah. So, Steve, I understand we have a land-based A-Train in, in Manhattan, a subway line, but NASA also has an atmospheric version of the A-Train. But what exactly is that A-Train? Well, when we speak of the A-Train, we're talking about formation flying. We have a set of satellites, and they fly on a, along a similar track in space. Like a train. Like a train. All right. And over the last few years, we've had five satellites that are part of that A-Train. Over the next uh, few years, though, we're going to add a few more to that. And collectively, these satellites see a broad range of remote sensing um, data. And collectively, synergistically, they can work together to tell us more about the Earth and its systems than any single satellite alone. So what kind of actual actual data are they looking at uh, from the A-Train? Clouds, land surfaces, green vegetation, deserts, ocean, sea ice. So, so it's kind of like a scenic train ride, a train ride across the atmospheric countryside. This would be one of the most scenic trains you've ever been on, that's right. Unfortunately, it's difficult to get a ticket, yeah. so it's, it's kind of hard to... It's always tough. In addition to that visible imagery, though, we cover the whole spectrum of data that's useful for science. So when you talk about a satellite, normally we call those emissions. So for instance, the Aqua satellite or the Aqua mission has multiple instruments on them. And with that package on that satellite, we actually have a broad range of instruments, which include microwave, infrared, visible, and so on. But we don't have everything. You can't put everything on one satellite. So other satellites in the A-Train, such as the Aura, which is towards the end, actually has those instruments that see into the UV. Now, interestingly, why why is it called the A-Train? First of all, afternoon. It turns out that we're in a low Earth orbit, Mm -hmm. and all these satellites are flying a similar track. And this low Earth orbit is called a polar orbit, meaning that we're flying across the poles, and that allows us to map out the entire globe. And because we're flying at a low orbit and we're moving so fast, we do an orbit in about 100 minutes. Okay, that's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. And as you're making that orbit, the Earth is rotating underneath you. Okay. And you time that correctly, then you can make it so that you travel over the equator at the same time 
for every observer on the ground. So let's say you're standing on the equator and you're looking up and someone says, hey, the A train is going directly over your head. Well, by your watch, you would know that's about 1.30 p.m. by solar time. So, so they're basically always flying or capturing data in daylight? It's well, that's a good question. Of course, as they make their orbit, they do go across to the nighttime side. And so when I say that there's a 1.30 uh, p.m. afternoon crossing, there's a complement to that. If you were on the nighttime side on the equator, you'd see them pass by at 1.30 a.m. Oh, for good. For a second, I thought the A-train so didn't have a sleeper car. <laughs> <laughs> Now, guys, Franklin, we need to get one of those monitor systems they have at Goddard in our studio. We definitely need one in our studio. It would make you guys look a whole lot better. It's going to take more than a wall of monitors to make me look good. I can say that for sure. On deck, Chip Treptate talks about the A-Train Symposium. And Graham Stevens talks about the Peace Train. You mean Cat? Oh, wait, no. Cat sang about the A-Train. Out, out on, on the edge of the, the atmosphere. atmosphere. There rides an A-Train. train. So, Chip, uh, Steve uh, told us a little bit about what the A-Train is all about, the constellation. Uh, what is the A-Train Symposium all about? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Well, science is important, I mean, in the sense that you want to learn things, but it's also important that you share that information with other scientists and the public as well. So the symposium here is a meeting where we get together scientists from all around the world and we come together and we talk about what we've learned and what we don't know. So this was an opportunity. We had a meeting three years ago and we thought, well, it's a good time to do it again. And actually bringing the A-Train together has kind of been a bottoms up where a good science idea allowed for a mission to develop and then the combination of other satellites, so they're flying in formation, actually came together. So it wasn't this grand vision that started years and years ago, it was by piecing together each of these things together slowly and then we got this great constellation of different instruments and we're learning things together. I mean, take for example clouds. Clouds change so rapidly and there's not one single way to measure a cloud. So we needed to put these different instruments together. And plus, it, I would see it would be really challenging because you have multiple satellites in this, in this, this constellation, in this train, uh, taking different measurements. I mean, how difficult is it to take all those data sets from each individual satellite and try to come up with a model to kind of predict the climate? Well, that's why we're here. I mean, it, it's one thing to learn about one instrument and it takes a lot of work to do that. But now trying to combine that where you have very specific details and you know a lot of understanding with that and trying to merge that with others. So it's not a simple thing to do it right. And so it takes time. And again, talking together and sharing information is a place where you build on that information. Now Chip, now another big component of this symposium is the education aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, I understand there's going to be a lot of scientists going into schools, uh, talking with students, and also you're providing teacher workshops? Yeah, that, that's right. This is really kind of a fun thing that we've added to the science symposium. We got a three-day teacher workshop that we're bringing in local teachers from the area, and we're sharing some information, resources, the web information, but we're also bringing scientists from the meeting into those workshops to allow them to have some interaction. And then on Friday, we're going to go out into the schools as well so that we can make contact with the students and allow them to have a question-answer period. So this is a fun thing where we get to give a little bit back to the community. And potentially one day you might you know, inspire and encourage some of these students to go into earth science fields. Well, you know what? We've got some college students here right now and they're inspiring us with their questions. So, so we're always learning from not only from the elders, but we're also learning from the young folks coming on. And, and what do you see the future of the A-Train? What, what's the potential length for this, for this uh, satellite train? Well, you never know. Space is a harsh environment and anything can happen. But right now, many of the satellites look that they got the promise of operating for several more years, three, four, five, six more years. So we can continue collecting this data and get a long record. And again, what's important is careful measurements for a long period of time. Because the climate, weather systems are very complicated right. and it takes a lot to try to understand what's going on. So what's, what's CloudSat all about? Well, CloudSat's a satellite that flies a radar that observes clouds. And we're interested in clouds for a, a lot of reasons and uh, principally Imagine Earth without clouds. Well, actually, we wouldn't be sitting here talking if Earth didn't have clouds, because okay. basically clouds provide are the source of fresh water that we live on. So if there were no clouds, there'd be no replenishing of the fresh water on our planet, and we wouldn't be here today. It's all part of the water cycle. It's all part of the water cycle. What, what role does CloudSat play when it looks? I mean, what kind of data does it gather? I mean, I, I get that they're important, but what are we learning from CloudSat? Okay, so fundamentally, CloudSat flies a radar that's unique. And it's unique because it has a sensitivity that allows us to see the full structure of clouds. And it's like kind of observing 
It's like the equivalent of a CAT scan of weather systems. So it flies through and it scans the weather systems. You can see the organisms as they work inside the weather systems and how the storms evolve and what provides the lifeblood of the storms, which is the heating, what we call the heating, the diabetic heating. And that's what clouds have provides us with. It provides us with an unprecedented, unique view of the work, inner workings of storm systems. So essentially you're able to look through clouds with the, with the radar? Look through clouds and into clouds and, um, and one of the key things we try to do with CloudSat is to measure how heavy clouds are. Well, why I, the heck I never we... thought of them having weight before. Well, they do. They have weight, they have water, and why the heck would we be care about water? And particularly when you think about this, you took all the water in the oceans of Earth, wrapped it around Earth and made it a big, big blue ball, right. it would, that, that would form a layer all the way around Earth about a kilometre deep. Wow. If you, then if you took the water vapour in the atmosphere, which is this principal greenhouse gas, which really critical for shaping our world's climate, and you compressed it down and made it a layer all the way around Earth in the same way you did for the oceans, it'd be 30 millimetres deep. If you took all of the water in clouds and rain, critical for giving life to Earth and everything about Earth, and compressed it down and wrapped it all the way around Earth, it would be less than one millimetre deep layer. Wow. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of water, but it shapes our world's climate and sustains life. And that's what we're trying to measure. We're trying to measure that and how it evolves as storm systems evolve and how it's likely to change in the context of global warming is what we're trying to understand. Right. Up next, we have Shaima Nasiri. You mean Nasiri? Yeah, you did it right. I See, I did it wrong, even it's written in front of me. Let's get to the segment. But um, now you mentioned a lot of instruments on the, on the different satellites. Uh, why the focus on the particular instruments? Well, each of these instruments offers something different. Uh, so as, as Graham was talking about CloudSat, CloudSat is able to see through clouds. Um, it can gives you, give you information about uh, very light precipitation. But what it can't tell you about is the very thinnest cirrus clouds on top, the upper layer ones. So it can't see those. The Calypso, the LiDAR instrument, can though. And so that can give us inf information about cloud top heights, about where clouds are, about aerosols, uh, which uh, you know, we want to avoid if we're looking at clouds. Got something against aerosols? I mean, I mean, that's... I prefer clouds. Everyone's got their preference. Um, but then, so, so these are instruments that give us vertical information. They just see along a track. They don't see anything broad here. Whereas the MODIS instrument has about 36 channels and it gives us, it has very good spatial resolution. That's so on the, aqua? Yes, Notice? that is okay. on aqua. It's a nice. And it gives us information about what's going on in the, the channels that I look at at one kilometer. Okay. Um, and then the AIRS instrument doesn't have as good a spatial resolution, but it has enormous spectral resolution. So it has uh, uh, information in 2378 channels. It's so like it's better than my cable hookup. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and an, and, an and an more HD. that you want to watch, too. It's an HD. Really? <laughs> No, not no, quite. No, not quite. no, no. If it had better spe <laughs> spatial resolution, we could call it HD. Okay. Oh, in the future. So, yes. That would be great. We have a cloud game. Yes, we do. Okay. And yes. in fact, I'm going to give you this because that's yes. the answer key. Okay. So what we have is, we're going to set this up. We have 11 pictures, and this is just arbitrary. We just picked 11, 11 yes. pictures. And we want you to name the type of cloud it is. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, what's my perspective? Am I looking from an airplane? Am I looking from the ground? <laughs> You're looking from a show, live, in <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans. Well, it matters, it matters. It's uh, some look? type of uh, type of cumulus cloud. Uh, maybe a cumulonimbus, maybe a cumulus congestus, maybe a happy, happy cumulus. Uh, okay, you're an overachiever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cumulus. Okay. 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 okay, all right. Cumulus. One, yeah. Yes, all right. Next cloud. Well, oh, that's a classic cumulonimbus. Or if you live out on the eastern plains of Colorado, or the, the uh, you know, you're going to call that a thunderhead. Interesting. Wow. Did you say cumulonimbus? Is yes. that what you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Although there's cirrus up top. Well, so there's double clouds. So the other, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, she got cirrus, so she gets half credit. Oh, wait, 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 no, no. Wait, wait, wait what, a second. What do you think is cumulus no, no, no. Oh, is it raining? Is it no, nimbo? No, no, no. I just what? have, I just have cumulus. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't have the nimbus. Oh, but there's really deep convection there. It's, I think it's really hard to quiz a genius yeah, on, we're, we're, on we're top. Yeah, we're probably wrong. Okay. So we're going to go based on what you said. Okay. Let's let's move. The next Move on. Next okay. One. Yeah. Maybe stratocumulus. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna have to say that's wrong. That's, oh, really? that's clearly an alto cumulus. 
or alto, depending on what part of the country you're from. And I'm making that up because I don't know if it's said differently anywhere. It may be. Mm. See, this is where we need more information about mid-level okay. class. Okay. All right. Then we're even. So, so, so we'll do we need a life point on this? Or no. Can we, go on, we can go on no, to the next one? No, we okay. can go on to the okay. next one. But so I think we, some we, people we, might uh, disagree with you. Okay. Uh, well, there's no doubt about that. Oh, this is a tough one. Yeah. No, it isn't. Okay. What is that? Uh, there's a condensation trail and there is cirrus in the back. Well, I'm Very so glad you said that because I never knew what contrail really was talking about. Oh, yes. Condensation trail. Yeah. So we're all learning here. That's good. Okay. Next one. Yeah, you got that one right, by the way. Cumulus congestus. Wow. Now, um, cumulus what? I'm congestus. <laughs> okay, cumulus congestus. I never heard of congestus. It's when it wow. has a cold. <laughs> I was going to say. But do you fly over and just drop Benadryl in it? It's a, you know, to neutralize. Anyway, no, I have cumulonimbus. No. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Okay. Yeah, it could be. Well, okay. It just shows you the difficulty of, of classifying well, clouds, so, just like Graham said earlier. And yeah. yeah, and so many of these things, these classifications depend, like our, our classifications based at the surface depend on our knowledge of where the cloud base is or where the cloud top is. Gotcha. And I can't tell very well from the situation unless I've got a good understanding of, you know, what my field of view is. In a I, true I, plug of the A-Train, she's basically saying, if I had all the A-Train If I had the A-Train, I could tell I you exactly just like, just what like that, that is. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, next, we have, I think we have another yeah, one. Yes, we have another one. Oh, Ooh, this might be a tough one. Yes. Um, that is Cloud City, isn't it? Oh, I hate it. Very good. Wow. I'm a nerd. Oh, what? Or what a movie? Jedi. What movie is that, from? <laughs> uh, that is from Empire Strikes Back. Oh, very good. That's a double oh, point. All right, we got a couple more. Okay. okay. Yes. Somebody's gonna shoot that teddy bear. Oh, uh, actually, that's, no, that's a fly. That's not a bullet. That's, that's a rocket. Oh, that's a rocket. Space oh, space oh okay. All right. Yes, you know, you know technically, I think uh, we'd have we to call a that a cumulus for, type yes. cloud. A cumulus? Yeah. Yeah. But if, if you're looking, if you can find really cool shapes in it, it's cumulus. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Bunny rabbits, cumulus. This is okay. probably the toughest out of all. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that is. You really don't know what that is? No. Ah, even I know what that is. That's an inquiris cloud. <laughs> It's a light bulb cloud, right? Okay. In all right. I, I mean, golly, I mean, I don't even have the A train, and I got that okay. one. Okay. All right. You got me there. Well, I'll, I'll use that one in class. What's point, uh, point total? Uh, well, I mean, if you take everything into account, I mean, she did get nine right. There were two questionable ones, but she even even had a lot of insight into those. I, I mean, well, the minimum she had to score was nine out of eleven to get. Oh, she easily okay. got nine. Okay, what's good? Yeah, okay, so pretty so much. I, I'm okay. There was only one that really. This chair is not going to like <laughs> open up. I'm not going to fall into the ground below. No, no, okay. it's not at all. It's all, right. all good. Batting cleanup is every man and his poster session adventures. Wow, those notes look dangerously close to the ones you usually give me. Are those beignets on his plate? About 20 pounds worth. Um, this is a pretty crowded convention hall. People are here going over their uh, research and uh, data with their colleagues from all over the United States, well, well all over the world. Um, as they discuss how they've utilized the data that's come from the A-Train satellites. A study of ice cloud properties from uh, synergetic use of satellite observation products and modeling capabilities. That's straight hieroglyphics to me. These beignets are delicious. Are announcing something? Only if you have something to tell me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Are you a researcher, a scientist? Yes, I am. What is your research? My research is aerosol. Aerosol, I work with Modis aerosol. Where's your poster? Poster is there. Okay, let me go check it out. We are looking at clouds. We want to do cloud screening. And we are looking at different resolutions and pixels and de define how we will do the cloud screening. Have you had any beignets yet? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. In this project, we're looking at how the physical ocean variables relate to fish populations. So in coastal upwelling, there's four things that kind of go into it. Sea surface height. Did he just walk in front of my camera? <laughs> exactly. What is your presentation show? Um, I'm looking at the uh, frequency of precipitation from marine strata cumulus in the southeastern Pacific, looking at how often it precipitates and um, how much it precipitates because we really hadn't had any estimates of this um, before CloudSat and Clipso. And the amount of precipitation that falls in this area will affect man in what way? 
Well, maybe not necessarily man, because what I'm looking at is out here over the ocean. You did say that. I'm sorry. First, I want to tell everybody the 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 title of your your research here. It's the Northwest Pacific Ecological Forecasting Multisensor Character Characterizing Co Variability Among Satellite Derived Variables for Predicting Pacific Cake Distribution. Did you have to use so many words? Talk to me a little bit about how you use MODIS in your research. Yeah, we were getting the MODIS image and we would overlay it into an uh, OMI image mm -hmm. and we we're trying to see if you could use MODIS to be able to identify areas of high sulfur dioxide mm -hmm. and uh, we were actually able to find about 98% of where MODIS was saying high sulfur dioxide was mm -hmm. actually did have high sulfur dioxide according to OMI images so it was uh, pretty cool. OMI images, talk to me about OMI image. Have you had any beignets? I have. Are they good? Of course. Do I have any powder in my mouth? <laughs> Guys, you should have at least told me I had powder around my mouth. Tell me how you used uh, the A-Train satellites in your research. Well, um, in this project research, we're using a couple of um, data sets from the A-Train and then actually combining them with satellite data sets that are not from the A-Train. So it's really kind of an exercise in how to put things together that don't naturally fit together. So we have some things that do, which is the advantage of the A-Train, and then taking things, we have sea surface height from Topex Poseidon, and then having to regrid that so we could actually put them together and analyze four data, four variables independently. I really don't know what you just said. I'm definitely going to need some help deciphering the information on these posters. I wish somebody can help me with this. I wonder if she has something for me. Can she help me out? Maybe not. What about these guys? Uh, I can't understand them. So let me move over to here. So what did you learn uh, from the uh, A-Train Symposium? I, I learned a lot. This is like a learning session. That, well, I'm glad I went to school for liberal arts and education. <laughs> but uh, this is really, really, really good, interesting material. And um, I would say to everybody out there, if you have an opportunity, go by the NASA uh, portal and check it out. Look up A-Train and learn what the uh, researchers are doing uh, with the satellites because it's very interesting and it will impact you where you live. Yet another thing is the DEVELOP program, which, which you actually talked to a few of the DEVELOP uh, students. Uh, if you're a student out there and you're at all interested in clouds, aerosols, atmosphere, anything else, check them out because you'd have an opportunity to study the A-Train, use that data and actually present papers that other scientists have the website uh, below. Use. Yes, it's, it's really a good program as, as we saw firsthand during the poster session. So. Not only that is, is that all this data, I mean, it's just visually stunning. When you take that data and you look at it graphically and from, a, from an animation perspective, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that wraps up another <laughs> Any Live. Uh, we want to thank all our guests on the show. Yes. Check out our website at www.nasa.gov slash NASA Edge, and you'll be able to download a video podcast version of the live show. Yes, and hopefully the name botching will be removed. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, keep that in. Yeah. You're watching Any Live. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect.